and welcome back. Uh, for this session, we have Professor Agnihotri with us, and I welcome Professor Agnihotri on behalf of all of us. Uh, before starting the session, um, I think some of uh, us uh, know him very well. But before starting the session, I would like to take this opportunity to give you a brief introduction. <coughs> So, Professor Agnihotri was heading the linguistic department at uh, University of Delhi and currently he is uh, faculty at Vidya Bhavan Education Resource Center uh, based in Udaipur. Uh, he is interested in and has taught and written extensively about applied linguistic research, morphology uh, and sociolinguistics. Uh, uh, he has lectured in Germany, UK, USA, Canada, Yemen, Sri Lanka and Pakistan among other countries. He has also been working with several NGOs across India in the area of elementary education and he was also uh, chair of the NCRT focus group on the teaching of Indian languages during NCF 2005. So, Professor Agnihotri and he is uh, my teacher the teacher. <laughs> uh, this room is particularly unsuitable for conducting a workshop. Okay, so please forgive me. I think they should have made some better arrangements where we could, you know, uh, sit in groups and, you know, I could go back, which I will anyway. Uh, but this is this is not uh, this is good for Babu conferences, but not not for us. Okay, uh, that's the first thing I wanted to say. So that in future, you know, all of you will have to conduct teacher training programs. So I think this is very important that you keep in mind the infrastructure facilities. You know, they should be very flexible, should be movable for people, you know, and, and they should be particularly such so that uh, the facilitator can disappear and merge with the background <laughs> rather than sit here, you know. Uh, like this. I never do that. I mean, people will tell you. <coughs> Number two, I think many of you know me uh, in the sense that uh, we have met in other workshops, you know, and we have interacted. Some faces are very familiar. Uh, I may not remember the names. Uh, uh, but I'm sure there are friends from the Northeast who I may not have met before. But uh, we always have a large number of uh, students from Northeast in our department. We used to have, you know, always. And they were always uh, uh, some of the best students. Uh, we also have, uh, our department also specializes in Northeastern languages, you know, in, in terms of. Uh, <coughs> the second thing I hate about this is technology. <coughs> you know, because it's more disturbing than helping, you know, it's always disturbing. So that's another thing you should keep in mind as you become teacher educators. Do use technology, but also learn to work without technology, with paper and pencil. You know, I could do all this on a laptop and overhead and things and, you know, with slides, but I know the electricity will break down. I would request you to switch off your mobile phones. If you have important job, you can leave the room. Sir, can you switch off your mobile? May I request you to switch off your mobiles? If you cannot switch off, then you know, I'm sure you have important things to do. This for this workshop is not important, you know, believe me. I mean, I'm not going to move the earth. Nothing is going to happen. But I can tell you that very important people like Manmohan Singh, very important teachers like Krishna Kumar, they function without mobile phones all their lives. Huh? So it's not important, it's not that important. All right, uh, having said that, uh, in due course, I'll meet you thrice, you know, so we will have uh, about eight, nine to 10 hours to know each other. So I'll get to know more people because if we go through individual introductions, which is what we normally do, but we do that in a group of 20, 25, 30, uh, it's probably will take a lot more time and I won't digest a lot of things that I want to digest. So uh, let us start with, uh, uh, you know, the kind of focus that we have for these three days. That means this afternoon, tomorrow morning, and 11th afternoon. 
that is those are the slots that I have. Uh, so tomorrow morning Padma Sarangapani will not be coming, I will be coming. Okay, and I will come at 9.30, I am told, between 9.30 and 10 we will start with the feedback. Uh, what I would like to start with is that in the area of language and in the area of communication and in the area of reading and writing, for example, you know, I think that is the focus, reading and uh, what kind of things you would like addressed, you know, what is uppermost in your mind, what kind of questions are uppermost in your mind, what is it that you would like to know, uh, what is it that you would like to reflect on, you know, I am not going to lecture anyway, because I hate to lecture. So I have lectured for 40 years, I do not want to lecture anymore because it does not lead you anywhere. But I would certainly like uh, that, you know, we engage in a dialogue. For these three sessions there is a kind of dialogue among us and that I and you and mutually we benefit from each other, you know. That is the sort of overall uh, structure that I have in mind. For that it is very important to know for me and for you what is uppermost in your mind, okay. So let us, can we start with that, that people would sort of open up and say, uh, what kind of things they would like done. Yeah, so I am going to sign off and wait for you. What I want you to say is that concerning language, that is number one, because we are going to talk about language. language in general and language teaching you know I can't I can't decide you, you see we may say oh, look you know this is not the focus of this no wait a minute we may finally decide look you know you may say what what about you know what about the kind of language Amitabh Bachchan speaks or Shah Rukh Khan who is better you know I may say okay look you know I do not know enough about these two people so let us keep it out. But you know language in the field of education, okay, language in the field of teacher education, language as communication, language as writing, language as reading, right? Is that becoming clearer? Sir, right. I will tell you that uh, the language in general is the this schedule, uh, this, it, this was in my mind that maybe uh, this workshop helps me to, you know, improve my skills, uh, improve my co communication skills and comprehending skills. This was, this was what was in my mind. So, uh, but. Do you have any idea how this timetable may have been prepared or who <laughs> may have pre prepared no, this timetable? No, no idea. No idea. So, I will yes. give you the idea. Okay. You see, these timetables are prepared in MHRD, right? Some people sit together, what shall we put in this slot? So they do, they put something in that slot, which is good, you know, and they do their best, obviously they do their best. But what I am saying is, I am more interested in trying to understand what is there in your mind, right? Is that a legitimate question or am I asking an illegitimate question? No, no, that's, it's, mo it's I, more clear now. Right. So I, I think I am asking a legitimate question that what are your concerns? If you think I will teach you how to talk in America in three days, well I will tell you thank you very much, go somewhere else. I cannot. You see, you, you have lived a lifetime, uh, you know, learning English and teaching English and using English. I am not going to change your, I can give you some examples, but I cannot. Uh, and particularly the kind of, um, okay, I will come to that, but anything else? So let us stick to the schedule. Uh, what kind of things you would like to say? Okay, I, I understand, and I will talk a little bit about that. So, uh, principles of language learning, uh, particularly at the f uh, while teaching the uh, primary school children, and another thing problem is in the tribal. My processing skills are a bit 
So, so please. Uh, yeah. The principles of language learning, okay. uh, particularly for the primary level uh, children. Okay. And second thing is uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, I am from Odisha. Okay. Um, uh, uh, in most of the schools of Odisha, uh, we have seen that there are tribal children, or there are also Tamil children, uh, Telugu children. So, in a multilingual context, yes. from children from Odi Odi Odia background. So, in uh, in in some schools, um, uh, particularly in the southern Odisha, uh, you will find in a class there are uh, children from four to five um, language backgrounds. Th there are Telugu speaking people, there are Odia speaking people, tribal language speaking pe uh, pe people. So, what the t what type of uh, input should uh, how the teacher can handle uh, such children for the for their language learning? Thank you. Very happy. Uh, I would like to ask if there is anyone sitting here who knows of a classroom which is different from the one he described. You know, he described a classroom of children of, of let's say, 45, 50 children. In our classes, they'll have much more. Is that a typical classroom or is that an exceptional classroom? That's a typical classroom, right? That's a typical classroom, and all of you probably for the first time in your life may be surprised to see that nobody at MHRD, nobody at NCRT, nobody at the University of Delhi asks this very fundamental question. Have you seen anyone asking this question? The standard paradigm is, what is the standard paradigm of education transaction in our country or in anywhere in the world? The standard paradigm, if you don't follow, raise your hand. Huh? If you don't follow my English, which is quite possible, you see, I am, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons, because of my accent, because of the words I use, you know, you may not understand. Just raise your hand. I can speak Hindi. Huh? The standard sort of model, okay, if you don't want to understand the word paradigm, the standard model of teaching in our country or anywhere in the world is one teacher, one class in this kind of structure, right? one textbook, one language, all of which is against the facts. The facts of the matter are very different, as he described just now. So we need to ask that question. Okay? Thank you. I am very happy that you, you raised that. Okay, who else? Sir. Sir, Over the years, sir, I have been thinking that uh, for teaching languages, especially to small children, are really there is need of any textbook? Do we really need textbooks to teach languages to children? Many a times, I because uh, ever since if, when you go through NCF and all, many things come in your mind many reflections come and I most of the time I th think that are are the are these textbooks really needed to teach language to children I think if you can discuss upon this very good thank you very much you see now you are now you are coming out earlier you were saying we don't know what you're asking now you know what I'm asking right now for the first time you see the whole country believe me the whole country Along, along with us, including us, including our team sitting there, you know, with the Abhavan team. All of us are busy writing textbooks every day, language, Hindi. You know, in a state like Assam, or oh, nobody from Assam, huh? Anybody from? Yeah. In a state like Assam, textbooks are written in nine languages. Am I right? Yes. Eight or nine languages, maybe, yes, maybe you know that. And, you know, Imagine, you know, the amount of effort. And here is a very legitimate question. Do we, particularly at the primary school, do we really need a textbook? Or should we be doing something else? Okay, what else? Let's tell you <laughs> the fact that I am <laughs> requesting you to raise these questions does not mean that I'll answer them, right? Because I may, <laughs> I may not know the answers. <laughs> But I will certainly struggle with them along with you. Okay, along with you, I'll 
you know, engage. I'll try to sort of, you know, try to do whatever best I can do. That does not mean that I'll give you a puriya, you know, bolo ram or mu me dal de. Aisa kuch nahi, huh? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, yes, yes, sir. We have uh, uh, developed uh, nine languages. It's uh, about 64 right, uh, books we have to uh, develop. So far, the national policy education uh, speak to uh, provide education through their mother tongues. So it is difficult. That I sir told that. So in a one class is a multilingual situation. The teacher who does not know the language of the children. So it is difficulty in Kastav Assam also. We have Hindi, we have Nepali, we have Garu, we have Mar, we have Marwari. So many kinds of uh, situation is going on. So uh, here, is, uh, here is another assumption of that model that teaching cannot take place unless the teacher knows the languages, all the languages of the children. And this is a very funny assumption. It is impossible. This is impossible to happen. So then we have to think of a model, you know, which accommodates those languages without the teacher knowing them. And nobody tries to think of that <coughs> kind Sir. of model. Actually, the assumption is not that uh, a teacher should know all, all languages. Uh, rather, it's an essential condition rather, I won't say assumption, that a teacher must know the language of the child, at least in which the child understands. So that is the basic requirement. This is uh, rather what I view. Uh, uh, I heard that uh, you uh, asked that uh, you talked about the standard model of classroom. Rather, I would say that the kind of uh, classroom that you described, one teacher with uh, 40 or 50 students in this pattern of sitting, can we say it as the most, uh, that, uh, almost, uh, that is most frequently seen classroom? Maybe uh, it's a question of semantics, that is the way I interpret and the way you have used. No, yeah, so see. <coughs> No, traditionally means see, you may uh, refer to a classroom mass, uh, I mean um, model, maybe of say 50 years before. And traditionally mean the, the see over the last 20 years, at least say 10 years, the pattern of classrooms in at elementary and secondary schools to largely to in elementary classes has changed. So the standard model of classroom over the last 10 years and the classroom that we think of, the way we describe that is mostly based upon the didactics goes back to 10 years back. Over the last 10 years, the the style of teaching teachers used to that coming to the coming uh, uh, to the front of the class and delivering lectures or explaining or discussing or giving so, some sort of example on a particular concept or, or uh, uh, the uh, topic he or she is dealing that was the usual style of classroom transaction over the last 10 years the classroom pattern has changed in elementary classes, at least in my state, that is in Odisha, you will see that children are sitting in groups in a so, somewhere in a U fashion and sometimes in individually and in small groups they are working. Of course, this this is a question to with what effectiveness actually that, that work is being carried out. I would agree. But the classroom pattern it is changing. That is what I want to say. I agree with you that uh, post NCF, post DPP, there has been some attempts, particularly in Odisha with the MLE programs. There have been some attempts made and we can talk about them. But let me tell you they have been fairly 
unsuccessful. And why we will talk about it? Because they do not ensure any response to the question that was raised by this gentleman here. They do not ensure how languages of different children will find space in that kind of classroom. And they do not ensure what will be the nature of what is standardly called activity-based joyful learning, right? This is the phrase everybody uses, right? Activity-based joyful learning. Learning is not joyful. That also you will realize because as we go through a certain process, you will see that it's not, you know. By there is a lot of joy at the end of it, yes. But you have to put in effort. Yes, right. You see, singing and dancing around activity children do in the street. They don't need a formal classroom for that kind of work. Okay, before we start, any other issue? <laughs> what is the trouble? What did he say which? So you know, it's almost saying that, look, you know, people with dialect are sort of subhuman. They are non-human. People with language are human. That's what he's saying. Do you believe that? Yes or no? Sir, you replied to this query, have you ever seen a man without language? Yes. Answer would depend on the way we uh, understand language. Ah, we understand see? language. Another dimension <laughs> which we have never thought. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay. Okay. Let us assume that we have sorted that out for one minute, huh? and I will sort that out for you. Let us assume. Then, what is your answer? If I understand that. Symbol system to convey ideas, express ideas. No, no, no. When I say language, it means full blown language as we are using it here. Yeah, that is, uh, I understand is that uh, words, uh, sentences, and all this. Then I would say that there are certain, I mean, uh, dumb, dumb, dumb children. No, 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 you are not listening carefully. I did not use the word words and sentences. I use the word language. That's why, and that's which, why I which, said which communicates. My answer would be which, different. Which, which communicates to full extent. And then I am raising the question, have you seen a human without language? None? Yes. If uh, I confine language to the language that we people are using, may it be Hindi or English or any other, that is the spoken language which words, sentences, etc., then I would say the person who is blind and I mean dumb from the bath itself is a man without language of this sort. And, uh, and what about if I uh, speak in Spanish and it does not communicate to you? whom we very stupidly call deaf and dumb. Uh, I mean, this is almost a crime against humanity, you know, to call them deaf and dumb, and I'll explain why. Anyway, let's add to this list. So, uh, obviously, sir sees some problem with people who are visually impaired or who are, let us say, 100 percent blind. Uh, there is so much audience sitting this side. Please speak up. Sir. Yes. Uh, I want to know uh, what are the good techniques of language teaching. Yes. And sir, ki ek pustak hai Bharat mein Angreji ki sthiti. Uske visay mein kuch jankari chahta hu. Ha, uspe aayenge sir. Matlab kuch kahi se to shuru karna padega na. To we are starting with language. You know, basic uh, some issues about language. It's difficult to cover the whole ground, 
but i want to build up a very basic understanding about language so that we can you know move ahead right that's that's the idea and i think this is the right beginning so can you think of the question is the question is whether language is constitutive of being human you see emotions feeling feeling nice feeling good laughing smiling my fingers my ears my eyes they are constitutive they are a part of being human so is language be part of being human that's what i'm asking you so two categories have been pointed out where they, there seems to be some kind of problem is there any other category sir in case of language yeah. sir uh, we have to respond if we have to respond we have to listening first yes. because the organ should be uh, action and it's functional yes then we have to uh, the responding we have to speak yes if i got the meaning how we communicate uh, want to say if i got then so i have to reply is that there is a problem here that's what you're saying yes this problem. sub sub uh, but there is there no problem with visually impaired or is there a problem okay. there is some uh, so let's uh, let's cut uh, type of let's cut this problem short uh <coughs> let us understand that we will come to language dialect and variety later on okay that's a big issue but the first thing is that let us understand that no human being except except the cognitively deficit except the child who is mentally injured right who has an injury on the left hemisphere except that person nobody nobody is without language language is a universal property of being human it is constitutive of being human is that clear to everyone now let us sort out these two categories we can leave out only one category that's all and that category is the category of a person who is cognitively deficit do you understand cognitively deficit that he or she is mentally retarded you know so much retarded normal mental retardation doesn't stop language but severe mental retardation deficit injury here that's why you must have seen that you are driving on a motorcycle you are perfect nothing gets hurt you know you fall on the ground but you get hurt here that's all small injury here and language is lost nothing else gets lost so in the left hemisphere in the, left hemisphere, in the <coughs> temporal lobe this area is called the temporal lobe temporal. so this area the front temporal lobe on the left side if the injury is here generally speaking 99% you lose language or something goes wrong with language okay but the visually impaired have no problem they can hear they can speak which is the primary function of language and they are perfect they have no problems and they can also read and write all visually impaired people in fact you will be surprised to know that i have many friends who are 100% bright 100% blind and they read and write better than i do do you understand how at least ask me how braille, braille is a matter of <coughs> bygone ages now you have a laptop you know please you are going to the famous university of arizona so you should know these things that now and you will come back here and mhrd will call you back right and they will ask you for to work as teacher trainers teacher educators you will be working for persons with disability children with disability right all all schools have to be you know disabled friendly now so you should know that it is very easy to freely download a program called jaws on 
on the computer and <coughs> uh, just take my word I can tell you 100 stories but these people read very fast because you know the JAWS you can download and you can say I want to read page 24 of Romeo and Juliet and the computer will start reading page 24 of Romeo and Juliet okay and then you you speak into the computer very fast you want to write an essay and it will produce an essay and give you a printout. And I hope you also know that once upon a time we used to have only one copy of the braille book this thick right in the library and every blind student used to use that book. Now braille printouts are printed with an electronic braille printer like photocopy. So you fire photocopy, 100 photocopies like this, you get 100 photocopies. You fire 100 braille printouts, you get 100 braille printouts. So nobody is language deficit. Sir, regarding JAWS, uh, I would like to make a comment. Yes. Uh, which is again related with accent and phonetics and pronunciation. Yes. Uh, many a times when I, you know, sometimes use some sort of uh, software, maybe on Google search by, you know, when I try to do it by my voice, if I say something. So I struggle because software <laughs> writing, it's designed on a standard. You're level. right. You're right. We, we are coming to that issue. That's a very crucial issue. The issue that are you are pointing out and the question that was raised here are they are connected and they are very crucial. We'll come to that. And you should go to Arizona with that kind of background. You know, that I don't want to do petty essay writing things with you. I want to do these basic issues, you know, so that you come, go there as enlightened people and come back more enlightened. And some of the, these things people in Arizona may not know. Let me tell you that. So you will go better prepared. Okay, what about, what about the second category? Because the standard, the standard argument is how can they have language when they can't even hear? Sign language, which is what? No, is it different from English and French and German? No, it's and Hindi. It's not different. Does it have grammar? Yes. <coughs> or is this sign language? Is this sign language? Yes. Hmm? You see, while I was talking to you, I always moving my hands, right? Is this sign language? These are body gestures. These are body gestures. These are technically called paralinguistic features. This is not sign language. This is not sign language. Sign language is exactly like, this is what I was trying to tell you, sir sign language because deaf and so called deaf and dumb are born with this faculty intact. So instead of Spanish or German or French or Hindi or Gujarati or Marathi, they learn sign language. And sign language has a lexicon, that means it has a dictionary and it has sentence structure, it has a grammar. So if I want to ask you, is it clear to you? Do you understand me? Then I'll do this. You know, this is sign language. This is the sign for asking you, is it clear to you? No, sir. Hmm. Sorry? I, I raised the, if, uh, <coughs> if all of us want that we should uh, proceed ahead in, the, in our discussion, then my question I will suspend it for later discussion with professor. Or uh, if you all agree, then I will. See, I issued, I, I, I uh, gave an example of a child who is deaf and blind from birth itself. What I apprehend, and there are lot of studies that this such a child may survive, may grow to a person, to adulthood, and the sign or symbol or gestures, because the two organs that helps the child to internalize the language system from the environment. 
is disabled so i i i apprehend that such a child cannot acquire all this therefore accepting only uh, but i don't think that how this is possible that either the gesture system for communicating or expressing ideas or the other that is this formal language is acquired by such a child talking of a child who is both blind and deaf if you are talking of that kind of child that's a different matter that's a different matter i don't know how many studies of that kind have been done but i think that child may not have any problems in acquiring braille eventually uh, but it is also possible that he or she may not be able to learn but i i think that child will have the language faculty i don't know what kind of studies you are referring to can you give me the reference of such no, a study no, no. no okay so then we need to think about it so that's a question for me also i'll come back to you and tell you but uh, i i am not aware for the time being i am not aware of a child who has both these problems okay and that's a very important issue that has been raised but uh, uh, if you are only hearing impaired or if you are only visually impaired it is not a language barrier so let's be clear about that okay and sorry yeah it's a question of multiple disability of specific language kind okay otherwise multiple disability doesn't mean anything you may have you may not have both the hands right and you may be completely visually impaired you will get language right you may not have any anything below here you may be completely paralytic below your neck believe me completely paralytic below your neck but you and you may be deaf and dumb you will get language so language is constitutive of being human i mean this is the point i want you to understand unless you are cognitively retarded unless you are cognitively deficit language is constitutive is a part of being human so that is one basic issue is that is that clear can we go can we go ahead okay sir yeah yes sir uh you know hindi sir i think uh, yes uh one one uh, one um, bihari said that akriti chesta bhav aru bachan roop anuman नैन सैन मुख कांति लखी मन की रुच पहचान सर आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट इट्स एक्सप्लेनेशन इन योर लैंग्वेज टीचिंग आई वॉन्ट योर एक्सप्लेनेशन दिस सेंग दैट आकृति चेष्टा भाव रूप वचन आकृत चेष्टा भाव और वचन रूप अनु अनुमान नैन सैन मुख कांति लखी मन की रुचि पहचान आई वॉन्ट योर एक्सप्रेशन जी ओके थैंक यू the second uh, uh, important issue i think which relates to the difference between language and dialect okay i think that that's very fundamental because you know people have this idea and you know uh, present company is always accepted you know we don't count because present company is intelligent okay the present company we are talking about other people okay. but most people believe that there is a fundamental difference between language and dialect am i right yes. or am i wrong <coughs> hmm do you agree with this is there anyone who who doesn't agree with this statement i am making a statement most people agree most people maintain that there is a fundamental difference between language and dialect Uh, sir uh, again uh, i i am not a language expert but what i can understand by my general understanding is that uh, maybe dialect is part of language okay. who 
would you would you then for example say that avati bhojpuri maithili maghai is a part of hindi or more metaphorically avati bhojpuri maithili maghai are daughters of hindi yes i yes. suppose See, i can it, say i mean it's so nice to say that <laughs> and she of course doesn't realize she comes from up that bhojpuri maithili maghai and braj our mothers of hindi are not the daughters of hindi <laughs> i i i never wanted to get involved in uh, no, mother no, and then, daughter again then, i said i am no, not no, a language no 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 wait a minute <laughs> it's not daughter and mother important i just no. wanted to say part uh, nothing by when you say part yes. then you are using something very important which is this uh. when whenever you use this off that means there is a relationship of something being superordinate and something being subordinate yes yes sub right? and subset right. something like so, that right so what do you mean the greater set is hindi and the smaller set is avati bhojpuri maithili we are in trouble you see the question is that we are in trouble <laughs> <laughs> we need to get out of that trouble okay we need to get out of that trouble if we want to move on okay <coughs> so if all of you believe that as i'm 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 saying not that you people believe that you know then things become difficult you know because then people start saying ah this is not what i meant <laughs> this is not what i meant at all you know like like shakespeare you know this is not what i said or or t s eliot you know this is not what i said at all uh i meant something else i i i didn't mean i was not talking about daughters and mothers i was talking about something else so let's talk about other people other people believe that there is a fundamental difference between language and dialect right so what is the difference language has grammar very good yeah like that you should speak like that so yes yes i know you are talking about other people you are not talking about uh, yourself you believe otherwise huh what do you believe okay then no we want to we want to say what we want to figure out what is the difference that's the point uh, sir dialect huh? uh. dialect has grammar how many people believe that dialect has grammar oh now he is in trouble because he says maithili has grammar <laughs> Sir, I am even in bigger trouble because. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you are in bigger trouble. <laughs> what happened to But, our friend? Sir, because was, now uh, I don't understand no, no, what actually minute. is language. Ah, there is a friend who was disoriented. She has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> sir, the point is that yeah. now I don't know what actually language is. Let me tell you that. No, when no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to that. We'll come to that, and you will, you will go home. you know uh, a little more satisfied but as i said you know it's not it's not activity based joyful learning yeah you have to do this you know you have to do this again and again and again yeah. it's painful it's painful please before beginning with language and dialect please tell me what is language <laughs> you see this is the basis na there are no easy solutions there are no easy solutions believe me anybody who tells you there are easy solutions he is fooling you and himself whether here or in the united states if people tell you here is a package take home and implement it don't get fooled right. your professor is here from arizona i am sure he won't tell you that but he has told on the very first day that we don't have any mantra to offer <laughs> there is no mantra see he i i was a, that's right so you see uh so we are not sending you to arizona to come back with mantras because india is full of mantras itself you know we have plenty of mantras we don't want more mantras we export to america you know we <laughs> no more no more mantras i'm going to be in the import yes <laughs> so what is the difference sir uh, what is the difference 
I'm not very sure, but what uh, this is my understanding. Language and uh, dialect has grammar, but in case of language, it is more organized, more uh, available in a very formal and uh, rather organized. Right. And very good. So there is a question mark here. You have given a very good answer. Madam, you left. <laughs> we are trying to get oriented. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. I'm sure you had. You had. Uh, no, no, no problem. So we were here. I'll repeat for you. We are trying to understand the difference between language and dialect because most people believe that there is a difference, and it is written. It is written in every textbook of Bhasha Vigyan. It is written. You know, there is a difference between language and dialect. Bolana Tibari, you know, if you if you read Hindi people and various other other books. And then we said for you, some people said that language has grammar, dialect does not have grammar. But then people immediately said there is a question mark, dialects also have grammar. And I think then Sir came with a very polished kind of answer which I think is accurate organized. which is which says no he didn't say organized you see the only difference is I'm giving you the answer now the only difference is that the grammar of a language so called language so called has been written and published the grammar of the so called dialect has probably not been written, written. that's published. all that's all there is no other difference, but it certainly has grammar. Okay, and and we will see, because if you see, if you, if you say that dialects don't have grammar, then in today's milieu you will have to say that whole of Ram Charit Manas is ungrammatical, because Ram Charit Manas is written in <coughs> Sanskrit or Hindi me to nahi likha hai na. Ram Charit Manas is written in, not in a dialect, it's written in Avdhi language. <laughs> Again, Avdhi, how is, why, why, how, on what basis do you feel that Avdhi is a dialect of Hindi? Uh, let me try a little. Yes. Uh, in my uh, in my experience, language is a medium of communication, which is a composite of signs, symbols, script, and dialect. And and dialect is the way of a particular language spoken in a particular language or particular uh, region. No, no. It's, it's, no, dialect is a part of the language itself, but a particular language can be spoken in uh, you can say uh, local dialects. Like uh, Hindi, it can have a, you can say, so local. No, 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 no. It's not not my. In terms of area. that language is very widely spoken, whereas a dialect is locally spoken. Am I right? No. Then, uh, often use the term local dialect. Huh? We op often use the term local dialect of no, Hindi. No, it's, it's not a matter of the term you use. The question is, what do you understand? What is your understanding? I can also use the term local language. The question is that there is an image, there is an image in our mind, there is a general public image that language is widely spoken and widely understood, standardized language is widely understood and widely spoken, whereas dialect is spoken in a very small pocket. Now, my question. Where do you think is standard Hindi spoken? And where is standard English spoken? It is spoken by the native speakers. Ah, of course. Oh, yeah, 
actually know that what do we mean by standardization like the the standard of a meter is set uh, set we know what actually one meter is it is defined yes. so in terms of language also does no, no, do we have say, any such standardization us, no no i i'll i'll make it simple for you let us say let us say that that language as it is co codified in oxford english dictionary in the case of england in the case of england language as codified in oxford english dictionary and in quirks grammar is the standard language again sir we hear uh, american english now uh, all the time you know when we have to give some option on computer also on internet also when we are trying to read some website so, uh, so anyway, they ask so me so will you do you want to take the position that there is no standard english no sir they ask me do you want american english or do you want yes, british yes, english I know. they ask me yeah yeah I very soon know. they will ask you do you want australian english or indian english or you know uh, new zealand english they will they will have to ask you know it is not that computers will automatically switch to american i mean that time is going to pass uh, but you see let us assume that there is something called standard you see you cannot dismiss this issue so easily because why because newspapers are published in a certain style books are written in a certain language universities teach in a certain language so you cannot dismiss this ncrt will write book you know supreme court issues orders to ncrt that please use the following list of words so you cannot dismiss that the question however can what can legitimately be asked is the in the context of this big and small large area and small area where is standard english spoken either american or australian or british huh? ah yes the standard british english is spoken in an area of 10 kilometers period officially uh, in official documents also most of the time we used quite standard language yes yes but spoken i said spoken except for oxbridge the oxford area and the cambridge area the except that you will find as you travel north you don't have to go to scotland you see the standard question for example asked about english in in england <coughs> is is this right all english teachers hear this right we know this ha huh? do you know this problem no about english yes ha huh? what is the question Why PUT is good and why PUT is bad? Why, right? Why, why this is an U? Right? Why this is an U and this is a? Why? People don't realize that actually the moment you get or sit on the train and get out of, you know, London, and move towards Yorkshire, for example, bus is not a bus. bus is only a bus a cup is not a cup but a nobody will understand you if you say bus people get on the bus they don't get on to the bus 10 miles 10 miles outside south of england similarly standard hindi sir i was in uh, i think midlands and we used to speak foot and bus only <laughs> no you might be speaking no, you might be speak no but there might there might be other differences there might be other differences as you yourself said scotland is very different that difference i could experience right so you can experience yorkshire you won't be able to understand i can speak yorkshire much before midlands you know you you won't be able to understand nobody will be able to understand all of you know english because you are following english but if i now switch to yorkshire english you won't understand do you want me to switch huh You want me to show? You and I say Yorkshire English. I'll be speaking something like "stands go and stands at." 
Do you understand that? You won't be able to understand. And this is standard, quote unquote, standard Yorkshire native English. You want to hear it again? <laughs> it's for you to figure out. I only say stands, God stands at. Maybe he has figured it out, but I don't know about the rest. I think I'm already complicating them with American. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can, you should expect such differences there. You know, when you go there, you know, when you, for example, go to America, you will find you should be mentally prepared. And the Americans who are going to meet you, they should also be mentally prepared. <laughs> no, really. Because, you know, uh, uh, when you say, uh, you know, make a move, you know, people sort of say, oh, achha, you want me to move a little. Uh, and uh, where you don't say in America, you don't say, where is the lift? If you ask people, where is the lift? Or where is the petrol pump? You know, there are no petrol pumps there. There are gas stations, you know, to the best of my knowledge. People talk of gas stations. You, know, you, you talk of, uh, there are hundreds of such differences. You have elevators. You know, you have a lift here. But he has an elevator here, right? Or, or the, the lift man is called what? What do you think he is called? The person who operates the lift? Lift operator. Lift operator. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you will find, you see, there will be, I can assure you, there will be hundreds of such words. We don't have lorries, we have trucks. We don't have biscuits, we have cookies. You see, the first time. The first, believe me, the first time Don Taylor from Canada, University of McGill came as a teacher, faculty, you know, I was much younger like you, uh, to talk to us. In the evening, he said, where could I get, where could I get some cookies? And you know, I am looking for a juicy steak. <laughs> Do you understand? Does anyone understand what I am saying? Huh? No, biscuits you know. Biscuits you know because of him now. Okay. But do you understand what a juicy steak means? Huh? Does does anyone understand what a juicy steak means? What? It's it's beef. It's basically you're looking for a you know, I don't know. So you will come across hundreds of such new expressions, you know. So you will have to adjust to them. And similarly, they will have to <laughs> adjust. But, but the most important thing is, please, uh, I mean, I am, I, am, I am telling you this about communication. The most important thing is not to hesitate, not to stop articulating use whatever language you can, use whatever <laughs> gestures you can, whatever accent you can. Don't, don't sort of hesitate and kill yourself. Okay, you might starve if you keep doing that. Okay, all right. So it is important, you can, can anybody give me any other reason that we should make a distinction between language and dialect? In fact, if you think about it carefully, Avdhi is spoken over a much wider area. Bhojpuri is spoken over a much wider area than so-called standard Hindi. Language is the last number of speakers, whereas dialects have less number of speakers. No. On the contrary, <laughs> dialects have many more speakers than a standard That's language. Yeah, but yes. language has another area. Also. Which other area? I asked you where is standard Hindi spoken? No, no. Hindi is found even in Mauritius. No, no, Hindi is in Mauritius this much. Yeah. This much. It is there, yes. Bhojpuri is also but spoken. Bhojpuri is also Bhojpuri spoken. spoken. Bhojpuri is spoken in Trinidad. Yeah. 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 So, you know. So there is actually, so I want to cut this discussion short. Actually, there is no fundamental difference between language and dialect. The only difference is that you pointed out, the only sensible definition, I miss the people who raise these questions, you know, 
You should not. Now, what is her name? Samreen. I don't know who will. Huh? The only, ah, oh, good, she's back. The only, the only meaningful definition that has been given of both language and dialect is that, that, huh? It is? <laughs> the most, in, in this context, in this context, the most meaningful definition is that a language you can write this down because this will be useful for you. A language, because it's only one line, so you won't get tired. <laughs> a language is a dialect. A language is a dialect with an army and a navy. That's all. That's all. Really, that's all. That means if you have money, if you are elite, if you are rich, your language is called standard. If you are poor, then your language is called a dialect. That is why the mothers of Hindi become the daughters. You know, Hindi was born out of Abdi Bhojpuri Maitri, and it is the politics. Why not sister? Sorry? No, no, Hindi was not there, so they could not be sisters. <laughs> Hindi is not even 200 years old. You know, when, when people were writing poetry in Braj, it was considered to be below prestige to write poetry in Hindi, in Khadiboli. Nobody wrote poetry. Right? Surdas never wrote in Khadiboli. Wrote in Braj. The great poetry was written not in not in Khadiboli. The great literature, the great, you see, even today the Hindi books contain what? Hindi books contain Kabir, Nanak, Meera, huh? Surdas, huh? Then, uh, then none of which is <laughs> either it is Avdhi or Bhojpuri or Maithili or Maghai. It is not Hindi. So this is the politics and economy of the language dialect difference. So army and navy are symbols, huh? yeah, symbolic, symbolic things. So you should know the same thing about England and about America. When you look at Texan English or New York English or California English and then you will now see Arizona English, you will, you will realize that they are very, very different. But then there is only one variety which becomes the norm, and that variety which will be used at MIT or at Harvard or at Stanford, you know, or at Brown, uh, you know, becomes the standard language. These are the processes of standardization, which are very closely associated with being rich and elite and you know having power. So standardization, I hope that point becomes clear to you now, standardization is actually a product of societal and historical power structures. That's it. That is why textbooks have to be written in that language, because textbooks are associated with power structures in society. Textbooks are not written for rickshawalas and sabjiwalas. Are they essential for learning of language? They are written, but uh, are they really essential for learning? Yes, language? we are coming to that. We are coming to that. And the second thing is that they don't have access to write their own curriculum or uh, uh, dialect or, or, or their language. Means Rikshawala and <laughs> other people don't have access to. Uh, choose or create their own curriculum, own textbooks and other things. They have been grabbed by those who want to. Who, uh, who, who has access to do the curriculum that and textbooks? E that elite person. 
you see actually please understand you know all those people who are who are so called you know this word is very popular these days stakeholders huh? i'm sure you know by the time you return from arizona all of you will be using stakeholders See, so these are these are you see new new terminologies introduced. So stakeholders, all the stakeholders in transacting curriculum, textbooks, and syllabi have no role in creating those things. This is the most unfortunate thing. Children, teachers, teacher trainers play no role. it is the university professors who will sit in ncert and create some teachers are called they are sent for delhi darshan you know they put in a bus and they send for delhi darshan they have no role they are not consulted believe me i have been a part of ncf very closely not only the textbook uh, the syllabi or the curriculum everything is recited uh, by a very uh, few also the issues of the system the issues of pedagogy the issues of classroom is also perceived the problems are perceived here and the answers are also resolved here that's why the fate of indian education system yeah i'm glad you realize that okay we take up the next issue and then we will have some painful activity to do right yeah no not too painful not too painful today okay you see there are so i hope you know we have addressed very quickly i mean i will spend a full you know uh, month on these issues in my mphil or ma classes on issues of trying to understand what language is what you know variability in communication is you know what language differences exist and why do they exist how do they come about but we have sort of summarized them very briefly for you here okay uh the other issue we will like to address the multilingual issue we will take up later as we go on It's very complex issue but understanding these is very important so this was very important to understand that every child sitting in the classroom has a grammatical system in her mind which is as good as that of uh ambani's or manmohan singh or obama or rabindranath tagore or shakespeare as good as perfect is it because as of as as perfect a grammatical system as that panini created in ashtadhyayi yeah because he he or she has language the fact that he or she has language is enough evidence that uh that you know her or his language has everything that any other language could have had it doesn't lack anything sign language doesn't lack anything so i think this is very important to understand why and how to take care of a multilingual classroom and how then for people like you to create teacher training programs and then create the uh, english language teaching curriculum and so on or other curricula that you may be interested in the second question that uh, you know you sort of touched upon was the issue of and uh, you were also asking uh, <coughs> is the issue of language learning i am sure all of you have answers to this uh can we briefly run through the answers how how does a child first of all do you think a child knows a language or languages before she comes to school right so you don't need a school for language learning that simple right that's fairly straightforward that to learn a language you don't need a 
school. But we need a school for other things because we want them to read and we want them to write, you know, and they have to read history. Okay, this is the this is the other fundamental thing about language that just as we cannot conceptualize any human being without language, we cannot conceptualize any knowledge system without language. No knowledge system can be conceptualized without whether you want to learn history or chemistry or physics or sociology or environment science, it all has to be transacted through language. language. So that is the importance of language. Another reason why language is constitutive of us, that means language in simple words, we create language, then language creates us. We are in, in that sense a product of our languages. Okay, what about, what about this phenomena that how does a child learn? Child of about what age do you think approximately? No, setting for a child, there is no formal informal setting. For a child, there is the setting of the Huh? Two months. Let us think of a child in the. You see, I am one minute. Sorry, one second. I am talking of a child who can talk to you, who can listen to you, who can listen to your conversation, and uh, which means that you know. You, you think so? Yeah. Three? Huh? One year? 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 No Hindi at all. How many people don't know any Hindi? Ha. So that's OK. That's OK. Excuse no. me. We understand to an extent, but when you really go into it, then we get lost. No, no, no. I, yeah. I, I, I don't want you to get lost, so we will not use Hindi examples, no. Even if there is one person, I, I have to use another example. You know, I have to use another example. But everybody is okay with English? Okay. So I want to ask you that a child, <coughs> let us say, uh, 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 do you think, first of all, let's agree on this. Do you think that a three year old child Uh, would say something like uh, something like let's say no I am sort of constructing sentences something like this. Uh, she eats an apple You think she won't say she eats an apple? No? Yeah. A three year old child won't say? Do you think a three year old child won't say wo sev khata hai? Bolega na wo sev khata hai. So, angrezi pe bol raho isliye aapko ajeeb lag raha hai. Ha, she eats an apple, it doesn't matter. She eats an apple. I I ate an apple, they eat, they eat apples, you know, or something like that. Not exactly these, but sentences similar to that. Please write them down. This is the painful part, you know, I, I don't write them for myself, I write them for you.
Now, now the mind-boggling part and the disorienting part. <laughs> now, if a child, if a child speaks these sentences, and we all agree that a child speaks, because if I write the Hindi ones, you will immediately say, yes, of course. So similarly, the English also, or I could write other, I could write actual data. You know, tomorrow I will bring you actual data, which looks like this. If a child, I want you to think about five minutes, okay, then we will break for tea. No, you are tired? You do not want to think? After tea? After tea. She wants to think after tea. Okay. Uh, uh, can you? Okay. But take these sentences, take your notebooks with you, right? And you know, please do not waste your time on tea. Okay, spend your time usefully looking at, just looking at these three sentences and answer the following question. The question is, if a child speaks these three sentences, what is it that she knows? What does she know? And remember, remember that she does not speak just these three sentences. She speaks hundreds like this. Right? Hundreds of this kind. I am not talking of millions which are not of this kind. I am saying hundreds of this kind. sir. I will repeat. I will repeat the question because some people have just arrived. I will repeat the question. Please write down these three sentences. One, two and three. I ate, okay, I ate apples, they eat apples. Okay, this child speaks, please listen to me carefully. This child speaks, she eats an apple, I ate apples, they eat apples. Question. If a three-year-old child speaks hundreds of such sentences, that means 3 into 3 into n. But I am not saying 3a into n. You know, I could also add a sentence, she is eating an apple, but I am not adding that. I am only saying 3 raised to the power n. Why do I say n can be what? Huh? Yeah, but what? From one to. <laughs> one to? Yeah. If you say hundred, then it should be uh, three. In, not three, four. Ah, huh. so we have ten. Chayari <laughs> abhi. You see, what could be the value of n? No, what? Huh? All of you, all of you. One hundred, one hundred n, n. No, no, for three. For three, what I mean is. Huh? No, no, I am saying sentences of this kind. How many sentences of three is types? Three types. These are types. And I am saying sentences. This is this stand for sentences. <coughs> then n can be how much? How many sentences? All one, one. Only one. All possible of this sort. Huh? All possible. Yeah. On this of structure. This sort. On yes. On how this many structure sentences structure of this sort? Infinity. Infinity. So say that. <laughs> that from from three to. Based on this structure and pattern. Yes. So infinite number of sentences. So then my question to you is, what must be there in the mind of the child? Mind. What must be there in the mind of the child to be able to speak infinite number of such sentences? Then we will be able to answer the question, what is it that the child learns? And if we know, Please 
this is important, huh? this is very important because the question we are asking is, <coughs> this is the question, hey Rajni, this is the question we are asking, how does a child learn? What I am trying to make you understand <laughs> through a through a activity based joyful learning, I am trying to make you understand that what <coughs> what is it that the child learns? If we know the what, then we can think about the how. Okay. Even if the T is not there, you can go out reflect over these things in a relaxed way, have tea and come back. But I hope you come back with some solid answers, okay? All right. <coughs> yes. So can we, can we have some ideas if people have thought about it? I know it's too short a time. Normally one would give half an hour, you know, for such a but you know we are really pressed for time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Should I say? Yes. Yeah. By this time, when a, a child uh, or is, uh, who is able to speak sent uh, sentences of this sort, I'm sure uh, the child knows the sound equivalent, the sound symbol of so many things and objects he comes around in his or her environment. Uh, sorry, I sorry to interrupt you. You see, I I don't want you to make general statements, huh? And I don't want you to make uh, uh, you know give a long lecture. What I want is a very sort of mathematical analysis of these three sentences. That's what I want. So everything you say should be based on the grammar that would produce these three sentences and therefore infinite such sentences right are, are you are you getting my point yes. you see yeah. you if i just i uh, let me give you an example if i if i say so i'm going to write these sentences on the side because, because i don't want you to I don't want the discussion to get uh, lost. Huh? So the sentences were, what is the first sentence? She eats and she eats an apple. She eats an apple. And the second one? I eat an apple. I eat apple. I eat. I eat. I eat apple. I eat apple. I eat apple. Now what I am saying is that suppose, suppose I tell you something like a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b, okay, and you know, that's it. I don't have to tell you what is a, what is b, what is this, what is I don't have to tell you. It will work. Similarly, if I tell you that the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the square of the other two sides, then I don't have to beat about the bush. Huh? So I want you to tell okay, me. Okay, I, I exactly I was coming to that. Okay, okay. No, not coming to that. Just focus on. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, coming to stay coming straight to these points, the child is uh, all uh, aware about certain uh, action words, I mean words. The child is also aware about certain noun words. And the child is also uh, very much aware about how to uh, join them, I mean constructing them in a particular order to create uh, an idea or uh, a meaning. What? Yes, sir. I want to, I want to uh, drop two, three, two, three things. 
the child is a, the child has already grasped a construction of this sort subject plus verb and an object. That we will come to that one by one, one by one. So, for example, the child has grasped, the child knows that there is a machine, there is a sort of, she has grasped this order. And imagine, which is, you know, something which is quite possible in India, right, and happens all the time. Suppose this child were learning English, Assamese and Hindi at the same time, possible, right? Or were le was learning, let us say, Hindi and English at the same time, happens in Delhi all the time. What is the order in Hindi? Huh? The order is subject. We do not take such children to hospitals and doctors. You see, a three year old child figures out. You think the mother tells her? No. You think the mamaji comes and tells her? No. Nobody comes and tells the child that English is a verb medial language and Hindi and Assamese and Uriya and Gujarati and Marathi and Angami and Ao, they are all verb final languages. They figure it out by themselves. So, that is a very important point that the child figures out. Okay, what else? Because I want other people also to come in, not one person to answer. Yes. Huh? You see, look, again, you know, please, I, I have to warn you. Please understand that all the grammar that you have learned till date is wrong, and you will realize it that it is wrong. Okay, so yeah, tenses yes, but what do you mean by saying tenses? The actions taken in the particular. And if you come to add, we write she eats an apple. The other one is I ate apples. So there is difference. So past form of verb with time time is a relative term relative to what time is relative to what Who, I mean, ha, who decides that? You see, the point Present is, time the point is that this is, I mean, we, we make this construct, which is, a, which is just continuous. And we decide the cutoff points. And according to those cutoff points, we decide which verb will go where. And Hindi functions very differently from and Assamese functions very differently, Bodo and uh, Angami and Ao and Nagamis, they function very, very differently. Uh, One minute, sir. So, they figure out the tense of the verb, right? Yes, you are right, that way. Okay. What else? Pronouns. Singular, plural. Singular, singular, plural, pronoun. <laughs> pronoun, singular, plural. Okay. They figure out, the, they have a sense of number. They have a sense of number. We see it in pronouns here, but we know. Do we see it only in nouns? In apple, apple, apple. So both in nouns and pronouns, they have figured out. Right? And will you agree? Will you agree? For example, I'm just making it a little more complicated for you. Suppose they. Do you think a child will say this also? a child will say this also? Yes. Such words? Yes. 
a three-year-old child? Not like this, but a child, no, no, child won't say cap, cap, but child would say, these are my caps, where are my caps? And, and, and this is a cap, this is a nice cap, right? And, uh, you know, this is my glass, right? The many glasses. The child will know, a three-year-old yeah. child will know. Yes. What does she know? Gender? Yes. She knows gender. What does that mean? She, she is for family. Right. Mummy, papa. papa, yes. Do you think English has gender? Huh? So English, English actually, you see imagine, you should always imagine a child who is learning English and Hindi or English and Assamese together, you will understand what problem. It causes no problem to the child actually. You know, children don't <coughs> fall ill. They have viral and fever, but they ha don't have any linguistic fever. There is, there is every reason for them to have it because English is a genderless language other than he, she, and mommy, papa. There is no gender. But Hindi is a genderful language. <laughs> and Punjabi is even more genderful. Changiya, changiya, kuriya, jandiya, panya, san. <laughs> it's sort of marked for gender all the way. But Hindi may be kehna padta hai. Sundar, achchi, achchi, ladkiya ja rahi thi. Ya... Lambe lambe, huh? Lambe lambe ladke ja rahe the. Huh? The, one, one second, let me finish. So, do, do you agree that children figure out the number system? Yes. Right. If they figure out the number system, what have they figured out? I want you to write these. You know, you are not writing. No, no, I want you to write these words. Yes. You have written? Have so, you see, you have to keep looking at them. So, what have they figured out? Yes. So, are you saying that saying cat cats, saying cat cats and apple apples Oh. Saying cat, cats, apple, apples, and glass, glasses is the same thing. Children who can do it, what have they learned? Okay. Okay. Has the tea arrived? Okay. Suppose, suppose I, I give you a word, I give you a word, pack. Pack? pack. What's the plural? Pack. Packs. Pack. How do you know? Okay. Suppose I, I give you a word, class. What's the plural? How do you know? So there is something, the point I am trying to make is that there is something that you know. Dog, what's the plural of dog? What's the last sound? S. S. So are you saying dog S? What are you saying? What's the last sound? Yes, hmm? dogs. Are you saying docs? No, you can say it without with vowel, but tell me what is the sound. I am asking you, for example, let us say 
Are you saying? So make the plural of both the words. Yaha kya jodhu? No, no. I want to say the bahuvachan. Okay, 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 okay. Let's say book. What? Kya jodhu yaha? So book s. Book s bol kya? Phir boliye na kya jodhu na chahi? Sir, to boliye na sir. So isme kya jodhu yenge? Or isme? That means there is something you know, right? There is something that all of you know. There is something that a three-year-old child has figured out. What has she figured out? We will have to put sir here. We have to put the here. Is. What is it that the child knows? When we understand this, only then we can ask, how does she know? Mama padhati hai. You know, mama doesn't teach because mama doesn't know. She cannot teach. You can't teach your children because you don't know. But all of you know this and children figure it out. So we will come back to this after you have some tea and some orientation. Okay? So you go and have tea and come back. Okay? Sir, yeah. I have a question. Yes. yes. Not in this regard. Yes. Regarding the tense. Yes. Uh, in Ronald Ruff works English grammar. Huh. I read somewhere. There are two tenses. Yes. Uh, past, right. past tense ah, and right. non-past tense. Yes. Whereas in our system, Tea session over. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I think you have disoriented nights, you know, reflect over what happens. So what I want you to do is the following. I want everyone, so we will have some presentations tomorrow morning. Presentations of this kind. That what kind of grammatical knowledge can be subsumed? This is the question. What kind of, please write it down. What kind of grammatical knowledge be subsumed in the mind of a three-year-old child, in the mind of a three-year-old child, so that she can produce such hundreds of such sentences. She can produce hundreds of such sentences in not one but several languages. I'll come to that. I'll explain that part. So, for example, you will have to do the following. Each one of you has to do the following because each one of you, each one of you is a, either a bilingual or a multilingual. Am I right? Each one of you. Am I wrong? In anybody's case, everyone knows. You see, I mean, nobody even makes such guesses. And these are so fundamental to pedagogy, you walk into a classroom, you don't even think how many languages your students know. But I, I assume that each one of you is a either minimally a bilingual or certainly a multilingual. Okay? So I want you to do the following. I want you to translate these three sentences into one language, into one more language. Take your pick, either Hindi or Assamese, or Angami. What are the northeastern languages represent? Huh? Khasi and Mizo, Aro, yeah. Any other? 
and what is your language I'm miso. miso okay so you will translate these three into miso so i want you to tell me and you i want you to imagine a 3 year old child who is learning english and that other language together so miso and english hindi and english bangla and english assamese and english right and i want you to present here that what kind of grammatical so you will have to tell me you will have to tell me tomorrow that what does the child know that all of you can say if i say book you don't say bookies you don't you say books but if i say cookie then all of you say cookies you don't say cooks i mean it's, it's really interesting no there is something that you know when i say bus for example then you don't say bus no you say buses what is it that you know that you say buses so what you will have to do you will have to make a list of a list of at least 30 or 40 words and then make a rule when do we say sir when do we say z when do we say is and then wonder around 1 o'clock in the middle of the night <coughs> that how can a child figure it out you know when to say sir when to say z you know a child who can't hold a cup how can she figure out when to say sir when to say z when to say is and what happens in hindi what's the plural of save in hindi लड़के लड़के एक वचन है बहुवचन लड़का एक वचन है और लड़के तो लड़के ने खाना खाया बहुत सारे लड़कों ने खाना खाया हाँ तो हिंदी में दो तीन बहुवचन होते हैं नहीं तो लड़के बहुवचन है या लड़कों बहुवचन है लड़के बहुवचन तो दो बहुवचन होते हैं दो नहीं दो नहीं दो नहीं संस्कृत संस्कृत में तीन हो जाए तो लोगों को परेशानी नहीं है हिंदी में दो हो जाए तो परेशानी है खैर ये सब आपको थोड़ा सोचना है इस सब के बारे में रात को बैठ के सोचें कल इसके बारे में बातचीत करेंगे तब हम सोचेंगे इफ दिस इज व्हाट द चाइल्ड लर्न देन हाउ डज शी लर्न एंड इफ दिस इज हाउ द चाइल्ड लर्न देन व्हाट शुड लैंग्वेज पेडोगोजी लुक लाइक एंड व्हाट शुड टीचर करिकुलम बी फॉर लैंग्वेज देन वी कैन आंसर दीज क्वेश्चन एम आई राइट ओके बट फॉर द टाइम बींग ये थोड़ा दे सकते हो हाँ कैन यू कैन यू टेक कैन यू टेक वन कॉपी जस्ट गिव बंडल्स अराउंड पीपल कैन टेक वन कॉपी ईच जो बच जाए वो मुझे दे दें
page 3 which says text 3, you just cross it out, it's a repetition, it has been printed again. So just cut it out, page 3, text 3, just cut it out, because it's same as text 2. So there has been an unfortunate wastage of paper, so I'm sorry about this. So this is the same, okay? Now, I want you to read page 1 and page 5. Can you just see page 1 and page 5 and understand what is what is to be done? Text 5, page 1 and text 5. <coughs> okay. So, can you read f the first page? Can you first read the first page? Yeah. No, no, no. I want you to understand whether it's clear. Is it clear? Okay, so I want you to attempt that. Please do not write your names at the top. You know, we are very fond of writing our names at the top. So don't write your names. Please don't, because in any case, you will get a copy. So then, when you go take it home, then you can write your name nicely, but not now. Okay. Uh, is this clear? What what you have to do? Hmm? So can somebody explain? Take the mic and explain. Can you? Uh, that uh, we have to fill in the blanks. This thing or oh oh yeah. No, no, so what do you mean by explaining? Oh, yeah, we have to read this passage twice before we start filling up the blanks. And we have to fill in only one word in each blank. That's about it. important that you understand so read it carefully and then you do the same thing with text 5 okay then let us see how much time is left so please uh, uh, these texts are very simple they are for class 6 or 7 they are actually not at your level Uh, the more you look at each other, the more you try to copy, the worse it will be, right? So, it, it's better to, it's better to fill in what you, what comes to your mind. marks because you are doing it because you know it's
not going to be with you. So, <coughs> uh, what I mean is, don't be scared. Okay, now please listen what you have to do. Please look at me. You will give your paper to him at the back for everybody and you will give it back and you, you move it further. Keep moving to the next. Not the same one. Your your give give it to her. Ah, yeah. 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 And some huh? The whole thing. The whole thing. Because without it's the same. Without filling the fifth. Without filling the second. Yeah. Give it back. And you give back. That's right. That's right. Apne will you please give it back? Hello, ma'am. पीछे दे दीजिए and then it should keep हाँ it can keep one can one should come back to you whichever way everybody should have one but a different one एक आना है एक आएगा भाई Please take it. Doesn't matter, but you should not have yours. The entire sheet. You should have one. Where is yours? No, no, somebody, something should come back to you, na? Yes. Pushparaj, can you get it organized? Ah. Here, here, sir, take it. Okay. You have a copy? Somebody's, right. That's right. Good. So, so everybody has a copy? And not your own copy? Good. Okay. So here we go. Ah, just switch with each other. Okay. So I hope you know this itself is a this itself is a lesson in teacher education and pedagogy. That it doesn't matter, really, you know, you can you can use your own class students to evaluate scripts you know, very successfully and without hurting anyone. Right? Okay, but this is a different kind of activity. Okay, so here we go. I am going to uh, speak out the words, okay? And you put a tick, right? And uh, there are 33 blanks. So you have to write at the top so many out of 33. That's all you have to do. Ah, their total is 33. And you just put a tick. And if it's a blank, then put a cross, right? Just put tick. Just putting ticks and then count the ticks. Is that clear to everyone? Huh? The blank, the blank will be counted? The blank will be crossed. Only the ticks will be counted. Okay? So there are. 33 and I am speaking. The first one is I, you, yes. think, yes. I, two, yes. had, courtiers, have, honest, once, into, out, Court, holding, dare, 
the the sent sent बहुत जल्दी बोल रहा है मैं एक बार बोल के दोबारा से बोलूंगा सेंट विल टुडे ईच योर ऑल बीरबल आई हु पर्ल ए आई कोटिय आई ए एम्पर योर राइट शेल आई स्पीक अगेन ओके हेयर आई गो I, you, think, I, too, had, courtiers, have, honest, once, into, out, court, holding, dare. the sent will today each your all birbal i who per a i courtier i a emperor your okay i can't speak slower than that so please count and tell me have please tell me the have, no, no, no 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 don't worry about your own script huh no no key don't change the scripts no 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 No, no. This is your script now. Don't worry. This is the same material. You will eventually get it back on the eleventh, so you can see your own. You know. Don't worry about this. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody who has got thirty-three? Anybody with thirty-three? Nobody. Anybody with thirty? Nobody with thirty. No, no. Wait. Let me ask. Anybody between twenty-five and thirty? Twenty-five. You have how many? How much? Exact twenty-five. Any? No. Please, please let me sort out. No, no. Wait, wait. Anybody? Please, sir. Please. Anybody above twenty-five? You know, this is not. Uh, this is nobody is going to get a prize. you know and nobody is becoming smaller or bigger uh, these are different issues we are going to talk about okay so the highest is 25 right so i want everybody to note this on in the notebook we can calculate the percentages so you calculate the percentages at home how many people here what's the total number 51 51 here so we have 51 people so n is 51 and the marks are sort of so uh, how many raise your hands 25 33 how many two one yes one two three right three three people three people Okay, between twenty and twenty-four. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh? Eleven. 
आपका नहीं किसी और का नहीं आपको क्या पता किसका है इलेवन पीपल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इंटू ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी इंटू ट्वेंटी डजेंट मैटर हूज प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फिफ्टी वन दीज कुड बी एनी फिफ्टी वन and this is actually the you know you people represent this country so you know this these are millions of teachers in front of me so it doesn't matter don't worry about yourself too much okay uh, how many between between 15 and 19 15 and 19 1 2 3 4 5 6 Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Huh? Don't count equivalent. That this will not go. That will not go. What he said is going to go. Just okay. This is not sent. This place is going to be fine. That will not go. That will not go. Okay. How many? How many people? between between 10 and 14 10 and 14 1 2 <coughs> i got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 okay do we have already Forty-seven. So that means how many left? Four. That means four people. Sir, not forty-seven. This is thirty-seven. Yes, sir. Thirty-seven. Ah, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Oh yeah, thirty-seven. So how many people? How many people between between six and nine? No, six. Five and five and nine. Five and nine. One, two, one, two. That's all. No, we have to account for fifty. No, two persons are not. So, forty-nine. Forty-nine. Count करना fifty. Uh, sir, you are not being counted. You see, uh, where sir? are you? Huh? No, it doesn't matter. If you have other important things, it doesn't matter. You know, but uh, I thought you had. I mean, this was the primary purpose of being here. You have other important things to do. It, it's perfectly all right. Uh, as I said in the beginning, it's perfectly all right with me if people are getting bored, if they have other things to do. You know, please feel free to leave, but don't leave in between. In Sorry. For for visa, for visa. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. That's fine. That's what I'm saying. If you have, I I'm not meaning it as as being. You know, I'm not angry or I'm not being satirical. I really mean it. If you have something important, you know, please go ahead. Don't, uh, don't wait. But try not to break the session. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Sir, can I make a suggestion? One second. One second. If One you second. could do from the beginning. It's not coming. Forty-nine. So we have forty-nine. Maybe I'm forty-seven only. Forty-seven. Okay. So how many we have here now? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, huh? So that means uh, how many less than five? Less than five. One. One, two. Two. Only two. Less than five. So some something is missing, you know. That's not nice. Sir, so I think it will be better if we can do it all over again. 
yes. if you start so from many, the beginning. How many, how many who have 25? 25. Raise your hand. 1, 2, 3, but you also said 25. So 4. So raise it again. Why are you wondering? Raise three. Yeah, he put up his hand and he put down his hand. 25. One, two, three. Again, three. <laughs> okay, twenty, twenty between twenty and twenty-four. You know, be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There you are. Now I think it's all right, no? Two are busy coming. Fifteen and nineteen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen. Ten to fourteen. You see, you know why I am doing this. It is important to do this. One, two, three. How many times will you raise your hand? Only once. Now, so that is done. Now I am saying ten to fourteen. One, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, <coughs> okay, how many we have? How many we have now? Okay, so let us stick to 46. That's all I can do because I can't get my numbers wrong. <laughs> So now you calculate the percentages and you know work out the table that what has happened to this passage and we will find out and if possible draw a histogram if somebody can draw you know what a histogram is yeah so if you can draw a bar diagram and show it to us because a lot of things will show from from that kind of thing right and uh, if we can we can we go on for 5 7 minutes or we don't we have to stop Huh? We can. We can? No, no. Uh, I am sure you can, but uh, <laughs> there are two other questions whether I can and <laughs> whether the people outside will allow. Okay. Uh, what was this all about? Could it be? You see. Uh, uh, please listen oh. to me. You have, you have the passage still in front of you, yeah. right? E everyone has the passage, so you can't say I have lost my passage <laughs> because the passage is still there. So, do you think it's a simple fill in the blanks exercise, or was it something more? It's uh, to do with comprehension, yeah. comprehension of the, the English language. Okay, even if it were simple fill in the blanks, it will have comprehension. No? Yeah. Okay, good. Very good point. Anything else? What, okay, let me put it, let me put the question this way. What kind of observations can you make about this? About something that you just now did. Sir, you are not, you are not, where is your copy? Look, you know, I, <laughs> you see, I mean, she probably said non-seriously that, you know, science, you know, this is more difficult than science. We are trying to do the science of language because that is what grammar is all about. What you call grammar or what we call linguistics, that is why it is called bhasha vigyan. We are trying to understand. So don't run away from the data. Don't run away from what you have in front of you. Keep looking at it. Because there is something in it. Right? 
yes now you can speak so don't make uh, you know uh, ramdev style comments you know we not ye koi pravachan nahi karna hai yahan pravachan nahi ho raha hai yahan main aapko kaha ki we have to write we have to find out rules yeah sir Now, can we say the use of you have prepositions to raise your hand. yes okay use yeah. of prepositions yes is that the proper use of prepositions so are you saying only prepositions have been deleted <laughs> prepositions vocabulary very good she It's one more thing i'd like to ask what that what did you say you see the issue is <laughs> <laughs> so can i ask a the question the issue is that you can also say geography <laughs> you can also say history <laughs> you can also say sir there is some physics also involved you know after all <laughs> you know let's not talk non seriously we are talking about the science of language now she said that nouns are not there adjectives are not there so the question to ask is what is not there is it the case that you know almost the whole of grammatical parts have been deleted and you have been asked to fill them pronouns nouns adjectives adverbs that is the question to ask and if that has happened how has that happened i have one more question to ask is that was that the only solution which you spoke which you had given was that the only unique solution Man, means unique answers See, what you have given that's the kind of question to ask that's the kind of question to ask that is that the only solution would you like to change a uh, a word let us say would you like to change a word in let us say hamlet's to be or not to be that is a english classic and i i can't temper with shakespeare's work okay would you rather temper with keats uh, no 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 not not no the question is that this might be written by a good author yeah and yeah. there therefore you do not temper okay but i can't exactly write what he has written of i course. can't i can write what he meant to say yes but that's, i that's can't exactly write that's why i said write. it's a very intelligent <laughs> question and we need to talk about it even if it's a shakespeare passage we need to talk about it okay and we will talk about it anything else anything else you want to see about this passage a lot of good you know observations have sir i think given the fact that you are can taking you raise, can you raise I'm your here. hand yes yes given the fact that you are taking n and given the fact that you are taking ratios and asking us to make graphs i think you are trying to take a general picture about the proficiency level of the teachers that are being sent there very good <laughs> okay okay you see i sort of know the proficiency levels you know i could have any one of you could have predicted this you know what what do you see from these numbers where is the concentration where is the concentration if you take yeah you know there are some how, how many of you know the normal distribution curve how many of you yeah what does it mean the normal distribution curve i don't want i don't want the mathematicians to answer Huh? Yeah. No. What is the full meaning of a no? It it looks like a. Why? Huh? Sorry. Most of the population lies at the center. And Or close uh, to the center. Close to the center, and the the yeah. very and few will go this side this and side very and few will go side. this side as you can see mm. so i don't have to do this you know i know i know that you know if i if i do a normal distribution i know that for all possible things the population will be normally distributed 
Okay, I know there will be a bell-shaped curve, and you see a bell-shaped curve here. But anyway, that's a good point. That's a good point that this is probably a good measure to test the proficiency levels of students. Yes, very good. Anything else? comprehension that she said in the beginning that it is a reading comprehension, but then you have to explain to me why is it a test of reading comprehension. No, 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 this passage, why is this passage a test of reading comprehension? So, can I answer that? Yes. yes. Because unless we understand Yes. What we are reading, yes. we won't know with what word to fill in the blank. Right. Therefore, what is the importance of the instructions? Read. It says read the passage twice right. before filling in the blanks. Right. That is why this passage is a good example of reading comprehension. Okay. Anybody uh, wants to add to this? Okay. It's already <coughs> quarter to six. Yes. This exercise, uh, I observe it not only as a as a tool for assessing individuals' comprehension. Besides that, this is one. Besides that, through this uh, through such a tool, uh, I be here definitely. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Pakka. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Too early for me because. Oh,